What's up guys, Michigan Air Gunner. And I've been seeing a question out there an awful lot. I see it every time when this year rolls around. That's deer season. What is the number one question you see on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you see air gun stuff? It is, what is the best budget PCP air gun for deer? And when you ask that question, it's like asking what somebody's favorite beer is or cheap beer is to drink. Everybody's gonna have a different answer. So when you're looking at a budget setup, you gotta think what is your main amount of money that you wanna spend? Do you wanna spend a thousand dollars? Yes, there's a setup for that. Do you want to spend $1,500? There's a setup for that, and so on and so forth. But really, you cannot get into these air guns for deer unless you have $800 to $1,000. That's budget right there for your whole setup. So. <laughs> This here is my very first AEA gun that I ever bought. And this is the original 357 Challenger. And this has a 24 inch barrel. And the only, the only thing I have done to this gun since I have bought it is I cut the shroud down because it was about to here. And then I added a... Uh, adapter from Donnie FL that was made for a 357 Air Force Texan and I had to machine it out just a little bit so it fit on the barrel and I painted the stock but internally I have not done anything other than shoot the shit out of this gun um, this gun I believe right now is 450 bucks from Fox Air Power. I could be wrong, could be a little more, a little less, but I know it's definitely under 500 bucks. This gun puts out about 220 foot pounds with a 150 grain slug. So, I mean, when, you, when you're talking about budget, that's just a gun. This gun I've had since brand new. I bought this myself, brand new, before AEA started sending me stuff to show you guys and I've taken a lot of deer with this gun you can go on my videos and look or the uh, I think the last one I did with this gun was helping the farm and that was with this gun and I took a deer at 75 yards and you can watch it do the death wobble but I mean for budget gun this is what I would recommend and then you can just go buy a compressor to fill this gun and you can buy a decent compressor for anywhere from 250 to 300 bucks that's just gonna fill your gun it's not gonna fill tanks or bottles but after that you're set for what you need I mean you need a gun you need a compressor and then you figure out the rest do you already have a scope laying around from one of your other guns do you have a Donnie laying around? You don't need it, but I mean, that's another 200 some bucks. So, when we're talking budget, AEA Challenger 357 has the side bolt, not the cocking lever. This is definitely what I would recommend, especially if you don't have money for a bunch of different PCPs, because of the simple fact that with a 357, you can shoot pellets. You can shoot these pellets all day long for small game. You go out rabbit hunting, you go out squirrel hunting, you go out coon hunting, you go out coyote hunting. This is all you need. You can get a whole ten of them. You want to step it up? You can go to FX pellets or slugs. These are what 68 grains and they're doing about a thousand 
50 out of this gun and I shot the other day for the first time just playing around with it I shot easily within a three inch group at 100 yards with these slugs then you can get into some heavier stuff okay. this is a slug that I make here it's just my own little Plinkin slug this is 115 grains and I cast these myself and this gun really likes those and this is like my mid-range go after coons or whatnot slug and then just to bring one out these are KRS slugs these are 120 grain hollow point I haven't tried these in this gun yet but just trying to prove a point and those will work for deer or again I've killed lots of deer with this slug right here this is my own 150 grain and these put out about 220 foot pounds of energy that is one of the number one reasons I think 357 the caliber itself is the best budget PCP air gun for your money because you get all these different grain weights you can go out you can do small game you can do medium game you can go out to large game and you're still under a thousand bucks I mean you can't beat that and then if you have a little bit more money you can jump up to this guy right here This is the Challenger 357. I call it the Big Nine. When it came out, everybody called it the Big Nine because that's tiny. This thing's huge. It's got like a 30 inch barrel. Side lever cocking. Um, I do believe these all come with washers pre-installed so you can fill it up to 4,500 if you want. But even at the 4500 you're just going to get some that are down so you might as well only fill it to 3000 or 3600 save yourself a little bit of air but again we took a deer with this and uh, i think yeah my last video was with this and she made it maybe 50 yards once i found where she went into the corn you could see all the blood and that was with a krs 150 grain solid or 158 grain I can't remember off the top of my head I tried looking for the package and I don't know where to put it I got so many slugs running around stupid but this gun is awesome and then you're getting into the $600 price range $650 price range but again you buy that $200 compressor or I recommend the uh, GX compressors I believe I got mine for like 320 bucks something like that and it works awesome I'm still I'm still playing with it I'm still learning it but so far I haven't had any problems with that little compressor and you're still you're under a thousand bucks so when you talk budget thousand bucks is budget it's not like going out and buying a $300 powder burner and then your ammo and you're set to go. It's just not like that with this. There's no magic $500 setup if you're getting into deer hunting. So no matter what you do, you're going to need a compressor. You're going to need your gun. You're going to need a scope. You're going to need ammo. And then you got to figure out what type of ammo your gun likes. That's a whole nother ball game. So, but what we're going to do is I'm going to take this gun out and we're going to do some shot groups at 50 yards. And then I'm going to do some shot groups at a hundred yards. And I'm going to show you guys what a budget, in my opinion, PCP can do. And I hope this guy helps you guys out and, deer season that's coming up fast um, I don't know how many videos I'm gonna get out right now because just like everybody else I'm gearing up for bow season so if you guys want to see that let me know 
I am going to film it and I'm going to post it anyway, but if there's something you guys want to see in between here and there when it comes to bow season or if you have any questions, I've been doing that just as long. I think I started hunting when I was 20, so 18 years I've been bow hunting. But all right guys, we're going to go out to the woods and see what we can do with this gun right here and see if we can impress you a little bit. What's up guys? We're out in the woods. We're going to do some 50 yard shot tests and then we're going to take it out to 100 yards. Um, I'm going to start with the lightest slug I have, which is FX hybrids at 68 grains. And then I'm going to go with the heaviest slug I got, which is the slug that I make, which is 150 grains. We're not going through a bunch of different slugs. This is just to show you why I think this is the best bang for your buck gun. Yes, I do have an expensive scope on it, but that's just me. You don't have to put all this on there. I'm trying to set this up for uh, some long range shooting for later on. But anyway, we're gonna go take three shots. I got a cardboard squirrel down there and then we'll go check it out. We are filled up to 3600 PSI. This is my Arkin scope with the Tacticam on here. And we are shooting with a single shot tray. Turn it on. We're going to go for our squirrel friend right there. All right, I'm going to take you guys up there, check it out. I'll just take you on my stand. I was really impressed at these FX hybrids. They're going over a thousand feet per second. I believe I clocked them around a thousand fifty, thousand forty, and then, you know, just, just above a thousand for a third shot. But I'm, I'm really liking them. I think I'm going to try them out for some long-range hunting that I'm getting ready to do, hopefully. But it's not a deer round, but you could definitely take coons, coyotes, or whatever else. I mean, I guess you could take a deer with it if you know what you're doing. But, all right. There is a, a hole in the bottom of the squirrel, but that was from a sighting. Cause I just put that scope on this gun. So I'm gonna flip you. All right, so there's our three shots right there. I mean, that's pretty good for a thousand some feet per second. That's less than an inch right there. And then I was sighting in for this spider and I was ending up, I started here, here, then I was up there. And then these were my sight ends before the squirrel so whew. I've been doing a lot of walking but next we're gonna go and we're gonna switch it to 150 grain um, I do know that in some guns like my Maverick or my Dreamline or the Dreamline I used to have when you shot FX slugs for some reason 
you'd have to uh, shoot a handful of whatever else and clean it before the net different slug would shoot better. So I'm hoping that's not the same case, but we're gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna stop you, refill my gun, and switch over. All right, guys, so now we're back, we're filled up. We're gonna try my 150 grains. I took three shots so I could figure out where I would be hitting. Looks like we're hitting about two inches low. So I'm gonna aim for the ass in the top spider and see where we hit. I forgot to turn on the scope camera, so I guess you'll see the last shot that I take. Last shot from 150 grain. That one dropped a little bit. I know, I have a bad habit of that. But that's why I walk you guys up there. I mean, if you guys want, we'll do one more. But we'll go show you. And then we'll move on because it's getting late. I have shit to do. Do, 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 do. It was nice and cool this morning. Now it's hot. I was out playing with the S45. And that again wasn't going so hot. So I decided to do this. I love this gun. I've had this gun since new. And I have yet to have to mess with any O-rings or anything with it. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Alright, so I'll show you the spider. Whoop. Stupid. Alright. So that's three shots at 150. 150 grain at 50 yards. Which is pretty good. These were me figuring out where my shots were. But that's not bad. So now. We're gonna play around and see if we can hit a couple raccoons that I made. One is just behind the 50 yard right there. And then one is way out there that I gotta figure out how I'm gonna shoot it from where I'm at, which is about 100, 100 yards-ish. And then we're gonna shoot a coyote at 100 yards. Steel coyote, not real, because it's like three o'clock-ish. Anyway, I'll get back. All right, we're gonna take three shots at the first coon, and then we're gonna figure out how to shoot that other coon. I'm gonna have to switch positions. And yes, we will turn on the camera. Cameras on. Unless we knock it over. If we knock it over, I'm only doing one shot. One. Oh, 
hot air just for the easy to see. Ooh. I really am liking these effect hybrids. They're expensive, but they shoot really well. That one was just a little low. All right, we're going to refill and we're going to adjust and then we'll be back. All right, guys. We're set up, we're removed, we're refilled. We're at 100 yards ish. I mean, I think we might be a little over 100 yards because I forgot my range finder, but I know it's 100 yards from this area to that stump. And we may or may not just blow it over because I have it barely sitting up there. So. I think I know where to go. If we don't hit it where we want, we're just going to go for the same point of aim to see if we can get a group. Turn my scope on. Trying to make sure everything is good. We hit it. And it stayed up. One more. I think this one's going to drop a little bit. That's pretty good for me. I mean, 100 yards. I'm going to walk you guys up there. Because... Well, somebody's gonna be like, that's not a hundred yards. But it is. So let's go, let's go on our adventure. Oh. I'm gonna have to buy more of these or somebody's gonna have to send me some. Because they're expensive and I'm poor. Poorish. Do, 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 do. All right, I'll flip you over. Hopefully nobody else calls or texts me while I'm trying to do this. Mostly my children. All right, so this is our first target here. This is where we were aiming. We got one, two, and that was, I believe, our third shot right there. I mean, and these hit so hard that we actually bent that target a little bit. All right, off to the next. See all this shit I got to go through? But it's all right. Hope my stabilization works. There it is up there.
I'm really impressed with that. That's, I was aiming here, so I kept that my point of aim. And that's all three. I mean, that's a dead coon at 100 yards. You'd have blew his nose off, but, I mean, if we practice at it a little bit. So, all right. So I want to set this gun up for coyote hunting. So we have the coyote steel target out at 100 yards. And we have a couple old beer cans from a shindig that nobody drank and I found in a cooler today. So we're going to shoot those too. And then we'll wrap it up with my best budget deer rifle coyote coon killing extravaganza of a rifle. And if you guys can prove me wrong, let me know. Show me what other $450, oh yeah, 357 is going to do what that just did. That is going to go from small game to deer hunting just by switching out your slug. Hmm? I won't see it. All right, all right. instead of dragging you all the way back, we're going to go get set up. All right, guys, I don't really have a spot to set you, so you're sitting on the ground. We have our coyote tiger out there at 100 yards and two bear cans. First, we're going to start with the FX slugs. We're going to go with the same point of aim that I had on the coons and see what happens. That'll tell me if the coon was farther or not, because I know that field to here is 100 yards. All right. Camera's on. I'm going to go with... I put a sticker on the coyote target just so I had a aim point. high to the side so we're not holding for wind and you can see in the camera that there is wind back there Tim Davis he gave me shit last time. Just saying. All three touching. So we're going to refill. And we're going to see if we can hit them beer cans. We'll be right back. All right. Let's hold for a little bit of wind. We can learn from the first three shots. Oh, of course the wind does stop a little. Let's see. Rolling. And a miss. Just gonna go straight on. more. Let's see if 
we can get that other one before the wind starts. Hi. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look like an ass. There we go. See, I told you we could do it. Now we're going to switch over to the 150 grain and see what type of group we can get at this distance. All right, guys. Last three shots of the day. 150 grain. Big old chunks of lead. I don't recommend going after a deer with a gun, with this gun at 100 yards. I definitely recommend it staying under 75 yards with this type of gun. But this is just for science. We're gonna see. So we did eight for the FX. I'm going to see where 16 puts me. Turn on the camera. Put me right in the ear. We'll just stick with that hold and see what happens. Oh, that one dropped a lot. But those two, you only know, really need one. So let's take one more walk together, guys. I know this video is getting kind of long, but I really wanted to show this gun some justice. Let's see what happens if we go over here. Ah, right. This gun is the most underrated AEA gun out there in my opinion 357 is really underrated in my opinion but i'm hoping this will show you guys why i think 357 is the best why i think this is the best budget gun i mean you're gonna get a lot of other guys saying 457 50 which those are great great rounds great guns that come with them but they don't have the ammo selection, like 50 only has a few dozen rounds. For 57, you get up and there's hundreds of different rounds. 357, there's thousands of different types of rounds you can get. And again, you can use it for small game. You ain't gonna blow your rabbit to pieces. You can still eat it afterwards. So I'm gonna flip you over and I'll show you what we did. All right. So this was the three shots from the 357 or from the FX. And then this was the two shots from my 150 grain and one that dropped way down there. I mean, that is a lot of weight for this gun. Oh, there's our one beer that we hit high. And that one that we blew apart. Whew. All right, guys. It's hot. I'm hoping you really enjoyed this. I'm hoping you guys see that this is my favorite budget gun. 
And if you guys can prove me wrong or show me a better gun for less money, post it in the comments, say something, let me know, and I will see if I can find it and put it up against my AEA Challenger. All right, have a good day, guys.